Hey everybody, I'm Sam Gross with electricbikereport.com and with me today is the Rad Power Bikes Rad Runner 2. This is the recently re-released second generation of Rad Power Bikes ultra popular electric utility bike. So what's new, what's the same, and how does it ride? Stick with us today as we find out. The Rad Power Bikes Rad Runner 2 is a cross between a moped style e-bike, an electric commuter bike, and a short tail electric cargo bike. And to some degree, it can serve all of those purposes and it can do it fairly well. This is the e-bike that since we reviewed it for the first time last year, it's the one that we suggest to people who know they want an e-bike, but they don't really know what style of e-bike they want or what they want to do with it. It's just kind of a jack of all trades. It's small tires, nimble handling, and the fact that it's got this huge rear rack in the back with a 300 pound payload capacity that's actually integrated into the rear frame make it fun and very utilitarian. It's a bike that's going to serve really anybody very, very well. So as the name suggests, this is the second iteration of the Rad Runner, and this version has a couple of very small tweaks that are improving on a model that's already very, very popular. Those tweaks come in the form of a little bit of a change to the handling and actually just a more comfortable seat, which is always very nice. This bike is built around Rad's 750 watt rear hub motor, which is powered by a 48 volt, 14 amp hour, or 672 watt hour battery that's mounted right behind the seat post there. And this bike is really just an exercise in simplicity and good utility. It's using a set of mechanical disc brakes from Tektro, the Tektro Ares brakes with 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. And it's actually a single speed drivetrain. It's got a 52 tooth big front chain ring in the front and a 16 tooth cog in the rear, which makes for a nice middle ground drivetrain, or at least, excuse me, gear ratio that's comfortable on uphills and then also while cruising on the flats. You're not going to spin out. You've still got a little bit of bite to the gear when this bike is up near its class two 20 mile an hour max speed. It's boasting a throttle and then it's also got this very simple display. Unlike many of Rad's new e-bikes, which we've seen come recently with this very cool and unique dual display system, this bike keeps it very simple one of Rad's OG displays. There's actually no numbers on it. You don't have any sort of speedometer or anything like that, but I really like this display. It's simple. You don't have to have a manual to know how to use it. It's just very, very functional and utilitarian. This bike is really just a masterclass in how to build an affordable and really nicely riding e-bike. They've kept it simple, they haven't put anything too fancy on it, and it's just built to be reliable and good at what it does. It's a very, very nice riding e-bike. Now, one of the coolest things about the Rad Runner is how many ways you can customize it. Rad claims there are over 330 different variations of accessories that you can put on this thing. And really how I think about it is it's split into two different classes. There's the Rad Runner that's designed for people carrying, and then there's the Rad Runner that's designed for carrying cargo. And you can kind of mix and match those two things, but they really function in those two different camps. This specific version of the Rad Runner, we have it set up as a people carrier. We have it with Rad's uh, passenger riding accessory kit on the back here, but on this big rear rack with its 300 pound payload capacity, you can put huge racks, you can put a gas can in between your legs, it's got mounting points for stuff on the front. It is just a really, really versatile, useful, and affordable e-bike that we very, very enjoy, much enjoy. The Rad Runner 2 is specced with a set of Tektro Ares mechanical disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. Now there's a lot of reasons why this is a very good brake set. And there's many reasons actually beyond the fact that they just is a very well functioning brake set. And mainly the reason that I like it is just how easy they are to work on and set up. Tektro has done a really great job of making these mechanical disc brakes super adjustable and super tunable, which is important considering that a mechanical disc brake is only as good as it is tuned. So the fact that this bike has that set up is very confidence inspiring, but we're gonna put it to the test today to see how it performs in our braking test where we bring the bike up to 20 miles an hour five times and slam on the brakes as hard as possible to see how quickly the bike comes to a stop. So let's see how it performs in the real world.
Bicycle braking is actually an amalgamation of several different components coming together and working in synchrony. It's not just how hard can the brakes themselves grab, but in the case of the Rad Runner 2, all of the parts that matter when it comes to braking, we're talking about the brake set itself, the tires and the actual geometry of the bike, all of these things come together to do a very good job. And we saw that in our braking test where this bike came to a stop on average in 10 feet and six inches, which is many, many feet better than the current all time braking average of all of the bikes we've tested, which is just shy of 16 feet. So this bike comes to a stop really, really quickly, which is very confidence inspiring, considering that this is a bike that's designed to carry a substantial amount of weight. You can even have another person on the back with you. So you really want to have a braking setup that's going to work well. A lot of people are going to look at this bike spec sheet and notice that it doesn't come with hydraulic disc brakes. It comes with mechanical instead. I would say that our brake test result is a testament to the fact that these specific mechanical disc brakes, these Tektro Aries, are going to do plenty, plenty good work for however much weight you try to put on this bike. In our range testing of the Rad Runner 2, the 672 watt hour battery that this bike comes stock with did a really, really nice result. We did two different tests on it where we rode the bike until the battery died. The first of which was in PS2 for a low power test. And the second of which was in PS4 where we actually used the throttle almost the entire time to get an idea of how far the bike would go on max power. In that PS2 test, we lasted for 46.65 miles before the bike died. And then on the throttle or the PS4 test, this bike went for 31.06 miles. Both really, really impressive results. This is going to be a bike that's going to be very comfortable. It's going to last a long time. And while if you do add some cargo and additional weight to this bike, those ranges will likely go down. They're still very likely going to be plenty long for anything you want to do with it. The Rad Runner 2 comes with a 750 watt geared rear hub motor that's a class two model. It has a throttle and then it has four different levels of pedal assist that you can choose from. Now, when you're thinking about this motor's performance, how fast it goes and what it is capable of, there's a couple of unique features about this bike that you need to keep in mind. The first and probably most notable is the fact that the Rad Runner 2 is actually a single speed. So you don't have any gears to choose from. You just have the one, which is a 52 tooth in the front, so that front ring, and then the rear cog in the back is a 16 tooth cog. So that gear ratio is a fairly middle of the road gear ratio. It's something that's designed to still be useful up hills. So while you're pedaling up hills, you're not gonna totally strain under that gear. And when the bike is near its class two maximum motor assisted speed of 20 miles an hour, you still can spin fairly comfortably. You're not gonna have to spin at a very high RPM. You got a little bit of gear to bite into there. So it's a very nice middle of the road, but that does affect the bike's speed, especially at the higher end of the spectrum. Now we did a number of different tests on this bike to kind of get a sampling of how this motor performs. And what we found was that in each different level of pedal assistance, starting from no pedal assistance at all, you get really nice delineations in speed. At the bottom end with no help from the motor at all, we saw a speed of about 12.4 miles an hour just pedaling this bike around the electric bike report circuit. And then at the upper end of the spectrum in PAS4, we saw a speed of 19.6 miles per hour. One thing I will say, and that is important to keep in mind, especially considering that this bike has quite a bit of moped styling in it, is that when you're in PS4 and you're approaching that higher end speeds, you really are probably gonna end up relying on the throttle quite a bit. That's just part of this bike's personality. It's part of kind of the styling of it and the fact that it is kind of built in that moped image. It's designed to just be throttled around. It's very easy to ride and it's actually pretty fast and fun. But overall, we've been really impressed with this 750 watt rear hub motor. And one last thing I'll note, something that's very unique to Rad is they have spent a considerable amount of time and money and resources really just dumping engineering into that motor to try and make it as fun and efficient and as nicely tuned as they possibly can. The Rad motors really are very reliable. We've put them through their paces in several occasions, including this bike. And I'm always impressed by how quiet they are and how little they seem to strain under really high output. They're really an impressive piece of engineering and kind of a testament to why the Rad name is one of the best in the e-bike world. Coming to the bike's overall handling, this is where we start to see some of the most significant changes that Rad has made to this bike over the previous version of it. 
And how they've done that is they've made the head tube just a little bit taller. They've made the overall bike's wheelbase one inch longer. And they also made the bike's chain stays one inch shorter or about an eighth of an inch shorter. And what this has done is it's done some very subtle changing to how the bike rides. That longer wheelbase makes the bike feel a little bit more stable at speed. And by tucking the rear wheel closer in underneath the rider, it made the bike a little bit nimbler. And then that head tube, among other things, is also going to bring the handlebars just upright a little bit more and help keep this bike in that nice moped style upright riding position that so many people love about it. And quite honestly, these are very, very subtle changes. Before I dove into this bike's geometry chart and before I knew that that is what they had really done to this bike, I didn't detect that these changes had been made and I have ridden the original version of this bike. This thing has always been very nice handling. It's always been very comfortable. It's always felt nimble and that's very much in part to those 20 inch tires or excuse me, wheels, which are very, very quick accelerating and feel really nice and fun in corners. This is just a really comfortable bike. It's fun. I love the fact that even though it has this big bench seat in the back, at least in this people carrying setup that we have this bike as, you can adjust the seat up if you're wanting to pedal more, or you can put it down flush with the seat so that it's definitely like that moped style bike and you can throttle around town and have tons of fun on it. When you come to the bike's handlebars, it's got a nice BMX style riser bar. You have the classic rad twist throttle on the right hand side. And when you're thinking about the display, it's a very, very simple design. This is one of Rad's older displays, and I personally really, really like it. You don't need a manual to figure out how the lights on. All the buttons are very clearly marked. It's got really nice, bright LCDs that tell you how much battery you have left, what pedal assist level you're in. It's just really functional, it's utilitarian, and really nicely designed. You don't need some big honking display in the middle of the bars to get the job done. Something like this actually does a really, really nice job. Overall, it's a nice handling e-bike. It's very fun, it's very comfortable, and I really appreciate the changes that Rad has made to it. It's, it's very subtle, it's very nicely done. You just didn't need to make a ton of changes to a bike that already was very, very good in the first place. So to get an idea of how well the Rad Runner 2's 750 watt rear hub motor performs on hills, we've put it to the test twice on our test hill hellhole. The first of these tests was on throttle only, and the second of them was on PAS4. Now, Hellhole is a third of a mile long. It's a 12% gradient on, on, on average. It is far steeper than the average hill. We think that you would be riding this e-bike or really any other e-bike on, on a normal basis. So we're gonna put this bike to the test and see how it performs. All right. This is the throttle only test of the Rad Runner 2. This is a 750 watt geared rear hub motor. Got a good feeling about it. So we're already on to the first, longest, and steepest pitch of Hellhole. And she's going pretty well. This bike doesn't have a speedometer mounted on the handlebars but it doesn't really seem like it's going to have any sort of issue on this this hill even though i have no idea how slow or fast we're going right now one thing i love about these rad motors is that you really don't get any sort of sensation of slipping gears inside the hub shell you don't get much much indication at all that it might be struggling with the steepness of this hill. It just kind of plugs along, humming away. Here's the second pitch, which is much shorter, but we've got no speed going into, so this sometimes will catch bikes up. I don't think we're gonna have any issue. No issue at all in the throttle section. Pretty good for a utility bike. Now for the PAS4 test. 
with the Rad Runner 2 on Hellhole. going to be an interesting test because this bike's a single speed and lots of single speed bikes have made it up this hill I have a lot of faith this one is going to do just fine mostly because it's got that whopping 750 watt rear hub motor but this is a 52 tooth front ring with 16 tooth in the rear there's a pretty good middle ground cog like I don't know if the camera angle is capturing how fast my legs are spinning right now, but it's not very fast. And I know this bike doesn't have a speedometer on the handlebars. I can already tell I'm going faster, even with just a little bit of additional torque coming from my legs, or faster than the throttle only test that is. I've tested dozens and dozens and dozens of bikes on this hill. And one thing I've learned is that it really doesn't take much pedaling or much force in the pedals to really make a motor go faster uphill. And in that time I've been talking, we're basically at the top. So like the throttle test, not a blazing fast time, but a good one nonetheless. The Rad Runner 2 didn't set any land speed records up our test hill hellhole, but it did clear to the top on both tests, which is impressive considering this is really just a utility bike. It's a moped style. It's not really designed for super aggressive hill climbing, but it did it anyway. In the throttle only portion of the test, it made it to the top in 1 minutes and 46, 46 seconds with an average speed of 10.2 miles per hour. And then in the PAS4 test, made it to the top in 1 minutes 27 seconds with an average speed of 12.5 miles per hour. Now, these results aren't just notable because the bike made it to the top, they're notable because they're almost identical to the results rec we recorded when testing the Rad Runner Plus, which is a sibling to this bike that has a couple of different upgrades to it, most notably being the fact that it actually has a drivetrain on it that has different gears. The fact that this bike matched those times perfectly is really, really impressive. It one speaks to the consistency of the motors that Rad produces. Actually, we see the, all of the Rad motors, the newest generation, really doing kind of the same results on our test hill, which is super duper impressive. It's a consistency thing, and it should give you a nice kind of vote of confidence for how good those motors actually are. And then in addition to that, it's notable because the test rider that did the tests on the Rad Runner Plus is about 10 to 20 pounds lighter than I am. So this bike is still very strong even with a heavier rider. So really great hill test result from the Rad Runner 2. The Rad Runner has long been one of Rad's best selling e-bikes and I can personally attest to this. It's not just something that the company says, it's something that we see out in the wild. One of my favorite things to do when we're out either traveling or just out on our local bike paths is just keep an eye out for what do we see other people riding. And this bike far and away is one of the most popular e-bikes that I see. And I think there's some very good reason behind that. Not only is it just super utilitarian, there's 330 different ways you can configure this bike. There's so many different things you can do with it. It's just got a lot of personality. I don't know if that makes sense in a video review or if you can really tell that through a screen, but this bike has a lot going on for it. it it's just funky and quirky and weird. It's, it's the type of e-bike that wouldn't exist have it not been for the advent of the small e-bike motor. This thing wouldn't really make sense to pedal around on its own, but you throw a motor and a battery on it, it makes perfect sense. It's incredible. You can do so many different things with it. It's got a lot of personality, it's fun to ride, it's super utilitarian, and I really love the fact that Rad has kept things simple on this bike. Rad's the type of company that has the resources and the engineering know-how to just cram this thing full of different features and all different types of hoodads and stuff that you can have fun with. But I love the fact that they've kept this thing really simple with a very clean display. I love the fact it's got a single speed drivetrain. There's just not much you can screw up with it. It really is kind of built around that thought of you can do anything with it. You can throw racks on it. You can 
you know, have run a small business out of the back of this bike. People do stuff like that with these things. It's a really cool e-bike and it's really, really an awesome option if you know you want an e-bike, but you don't quite know what you want to do with it yet because you can pretty much do anything on this. If you've liked this review of the Rad Runner 2, be sure to like and subscribe to the Electric Bike Report channel. If you want to know more about this bike and all the data that we collected on it, be sure to click the link in the description below this video for a more detailed written review of the Rad Runner 2. For Electric Bike Report, I'm Sam Gross. Thank you so much for watching.